Happy New Year. Way to go for being here, a part of this event, um, for showing up, ready to learn. Maybe you're in a season of your business where you're just like, I, it's time. I need to turn over a new leaf. Um, maybe you're in a season where you're killing it right now and you just need a little extra fuel for your fire. You're excited. You love being here. You're in a great place. Um, I'm so happy for you. Way to go. Way to kill the first half of your year so that you can have an amazing second half of your year. But if you're in a place where, gosh, you're just hitting your goals is feeling hard or you've been working on it for a long time um, or your dream feels kind of out of reach. I'm glad that you're here. I'm really glad that you're here. Um, I'm proud of you for showing up. That's the first step. And I really hope that I can say something today. I genuinely pray that I can say something today that will help move you um, because I've definitely been there <laughs> more times than I would like to admit. Um, and I'm, I want to share with you today how you can move forward, okay? Because no matter where you are, honestly, that's what we all need to do. That's what we're all called to do is we need to figure out how to move forward no matter where you are. So I'm excited to spend the next hour with you. My name is Jamie Taylor. I am currently the country's youngest active national sales director, um, which is just so fun to say. And my first six months of being in national have been amazing. <laughs> like I'm not going to front. It's been amazing. Dream come true. Everything that I imagined and more. So if national sales director is on your heart, I do want to encourage you keep going. Um, and I will, I'll give you a little bit of my background for sure. For those of you who don't know me or who aren't familiar, but I actually have a lot of ground to cover today. So we won't spend a lot of time there, but I started my business in 2012. So um, I'm coming up on my 10 year anniversary this upcoming summer, which is crazy. Um, so 2012, I was a 20 year old college student in the summer, right in the middle of some, um, you know, the school year and this is not something that i imagined for myself <laughs> raise your hand if you're like uh same uh ditto <laughs> this was not on the plan i think most of us can say that of course but you know the rest is history um however i will say when i started my business i really i i did not know i did not know what was ahead um i had very low expectations for myself um, my confidence was really low there it's i believed you know people did earn cars and they go the, the distance but th that's something that must be reserved for a certain kind of girl. and i don't know if you can relate to this um you know that girl the girl who was captain of the cheerleading team, leader of every extracurricular, <laughs> valedictorian, you know, um, all of the things, just that, like all American, like perfect, outgoing leader type of girl. I was not that girl. I was a really small fish in a really big pond in high school and college. I had never been a leader, really. Um, and so I, I, I wasn't the most confident person that I knew. And so when I looked at an opportunity like this and I saw people who were succeeding, one of the first things I believed right out the gate was, you know, it's just, you gotta be a certain kind of person. You gotta have a certain kind of personality type, a certain kind of boldness or fearlessness that I just do not possess. Um, and it was just so refreshing in the beginning to learn pretty quickly that that's actually not true. And right where I am with the skills that God gave me, with the personality that God gave me, with the resources that God gave me, I could make this work. That was so empowering. And so I want you to know that all of you, every single one of you, truly. So that first year was really fun. Um, I it was just a great time. I was a consultant for my first year of the business and it was my last year of school. I debuted as a sales director the same week that I graduated from college. So that was a crazy month of my life, but it was really fun. And so um, I got out, I had my college degree and then it was kind of this up in the air, like, what do I do? What do I do? I felt like the grown ups um, in my life would have really loved to see me you know, I had this degree, this expensive degree from a private university that I should probably get out there and go use and join the workforce. And I had an opportunity actually for that with the internship that I had. Um, it could have turned into a full-time job, salary, benefits, the whole thing. Now, 
keep in mind, the salary was very low <laughs> and I did not enjoy the work that I was doing at this internship, but it was an opportunity for something that was a sure thing, a salary. Um, I had a fresh college degree in the year 2013, which is, this is when this was, the job market wasn't amazing. I do remember a lot of kids that I graduated with were struggling to get jobs and I was getting married. My husband and I got married shortly after graduation. And so I was in this season where I was like, I love my Mary Kay business and I became a sales director and earned my first Mary Kay card during that season, something I did not imagine in my wildest of dreams. Um, and I ended up choosing to pursue Mary Kay full time, which is a very bold and courageous decision for me. Um, and it has been an amazing journey. You know, I heard one time um, I heard it said on a podcast once people overestimate what they can do in a year. And they underestimate what they can do in 10. And I straight up didn't get it. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand what that means. I do not resonate. Um, but, you know, now that I'm coming up on my 10-year anniversary and just finished one of my wildest dreams of becoming a national sales director, um, it resonates with me a little bit more. You know, I think back to so many times. I, th I think this is appropriate, you know, looking down the barrel at a brand new year. All of us, definitely myself, I'll at least speak for myself, every seminar year or every new calendar year, it was like, I... I, it was filled with so much hope and promise. You know, this is the year that I'm going to have my quantum leap. This is the year where everything's going to change. This is the year where I'm going to get all my ducks in a row. This is my moment. This is my seminar year. This is the year I'm putting together a national area, you know, whatever it was. Um, and we have a tendency to do that. I think that it's just human nature and it's okay. And like I said at the beginning of this call, I honestly, I love, I love the vibe around a new year. But we can sometimes put all of our eggs in the basket of what must happen right now, what must happen this year. But if we just stay the course and we just stay consistent and we make up our minds to be here for the long haul, what could be possible for you when that effort and that consistency has time to accumulate and really take root, you maybe could not even imagine what your life, what your business, what could be possible for your family, what it could look like 10 years down the road of just sticking with it. We love that instant gratification. We love the idea that this is the year of the quantum leap. And we are going to talk about how to make this year really great. Trust and believe. But I just want to encourage you before we get started. What if you took the principles that we're going to talk about today? What if we took this hope, this energy that you have in the new, the new year, this eagerness inside of you to take these notes, to show up, to, to change, to grab the bull by the horn? What would it look like if you extended that commitment for the long haul? Past this quarter, this month, this year even. What could be possible for you if that could accumulate? And I've gotten to see that kind of manifest in my own life and to look back, if I could go back to that timid 20-year-old girl who was so scared of what this opportunity was going to be, what people were going to think, and what could I do, and what if I fail? Um, there's so much that she did so well, and I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to give you that. But also, I would just tell her, oh my gosh, Jamie. You have no idea. You have no idea. You have no idea what it's going to look like 10 years down the road. And it's not going to look like that for a really long time. So enjoy the journey right where you're at right now. And if you do that enough, if you manage the middle enough, gosh, it's, it's going to blow your own mind. And it excites me to think what the next 10 years could look like. So Anyways, that's a little soapbox I have. Let's go ahead and get into our training, okay? Um, and, and again, a little bit about me, since I haven't said this, I am 29 years old. You might be wondering that since I said I was the youngest. I am a mom to a little boy named Cash. He's three, and I'm married to my college sweetheart, Zach. We live right outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and um, I moved here about three years ago. So that was part of my journey where I got to move to a new state, didn't know anybody, kind of had to rebuild a customer base and things like that. I learned a lot. So it was really cool. And maybe that'll come up in today's training too. But it's just a little bit about me and all the rest of our training we're going to get into. You're going to hear a lot more about the journey. So let's jump in. What we're going to spend our time today talking about is 
Um, and I just want to make sure that I'm going to be good on time. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Um, we're going to be talking about 10 ways that you can grow right now, right where you are. 10 ways to grow right where you are. Because I know today I'm going to be talking to sales directors, beauty consultants, everything in between. Maybe some of you guys have been building your business for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Some of you have been building your business for literally decades. And so here we all are together. All of our paths were in different parts of our journey in different chapters. And so with that being said, I do, well, maybe I can't speak to into each one of your situations. Every single one of us, no matter where we find ourselves in our journey, we can grow right where we are. And I do believe that's what we're called to do. Um, in my national sales director debut speech um, uh, during virtual seminar, I wouldn't expect you to remember it, but I said, you know, not quitting is half the battle. Not quitting is half the stinking battle, like I kind of mentioned earlier. But then I said in my speech, but not quitting, it is only half the battle. <laughs> not quitting is great and all, and, and you that's the first step. That is half the battle, except for that's only half. What did I mean by that? There's beyond not quitting, you also must commit to growing. So, you know, I see some people come along and they're very willing and they're, they're, they'll grow, but they won't go the distance. They won't hang in there. They won't commit to not quitting when things get hard. But I have, I have other friends and peers who, and myself even, who not quitting is not an option. I'm not going anywhere, but they can, and I have become stagnant sometimes in certain seasons where, yeah, I'm not going anywhere, but I'm also not growing. We don't want either. We want to keep going and we want to grow. And that is how you're going to make your dreams happen. Whatever your dream may be. You have to keep growing. You are called to grow right now, no matter where this event is finding you in your journey. All right. So 10 ways to get growing right now. All right. Number one, number one, this is an easy one. Identify what is next for you. What is next? This is something that younger Jamie did really well. I did this really well because the big picture felt so overwhelming. Something that I did really well was I just managed, what can I do right now? It was simple baby steps. Become a star consultant. Get my first team member. Take a promotion up the career path to senior. Become a red jacket. Become a team leader. Earn my first gold medal become a star again and a higher level star this time. Submit the DIQ program, complete the DIQ program, finish qualifying for a car. Do you guys get what I'm saying? This is something that served me well and, and continued to into my years as a director where sometimes when I was like, well, what do I do? There's so much that I want to do. Truly, what's next? What is the next thing for my consultants listening right now? What is the next level on the career path or the next accomplishment that you really need to check off of your list? The more things that you can learn how to do and do well, that's how you're going to grow into a leadership position. So um, it's in learning how to be a star consultant consistently that you are going to then have the skill set to be able to pass it on to others. It is learning how to get five team members on your team all active at the same time to be a team leader. You're going to learn in the process of that. What is your next? And, you know, there's bonus points for what not only is your next, but what's your new directors? I want to talk to you for a second. What you might kind of know, yeah, this is what I want to get done by seminar. I want to do, you know, this, blah, 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 blah. And that's great. And, you know, you, you kind of know what to do. But can I challenge you? What's something not only that's next for you, what's something you've never done before? I'm going to give you an example. You know, maybe some of you guys on this call, you have done the National Court of Sales tons of times. That's awesome. I wouldn't consider that your next. Will you do National Court of Sales again by seminar? Yes, but it's not going to require a new level of you. You've done it. So is it an accomplishment to do it again for the fifth or sixth or 15th time in a row? Absolutely it is. Is it the thing that is going to help you grow? 
I would encourage you to pick something that is going to grow you a little bit. So, you know, the funny thing is we have some people on here where you do national court of sales all the time. And I'm like, great, go do it again, but pick something else for me. It was several years before I really wrapped my head around court of sales and did it for the first time. So for me, that year to do court of sales, that required something new in me. It required a deeper level of creativity and commitment for me to figure out how to get that amount of sales every month to work with my customer base. It forced me to up my systems. It made me a better consultant. I was more excited about the products, made me a better recruiter going for court of sales the first time. It was a next step for me that really was foundational for my leadership and made me a better leader in learning how to do it. But maybe for some of you on this call, that's not the appropriate goal for you. It's not your appropriate next because you've done it. I want you to pick something that's going to challenge you. Now, that's just an example. Maybe for you, it's the next car level. You are ready to be a premier club or a Cadillac director. Maybe it's a level in the career path. You're like, I want an offspring sales director so bad. I want to be a national sales director. I am ready to do the gosh darn top sales director trip. Or I'm tired of being a red. I want to be a DIQ. I want to be a sales director. I want to earn the car. I've never earned a gold medal before. You know, I've never been a star. Whatever it is. What is your next? And let's take it a little deeper. What is your new? What is that thing? This is just the right off the bat. Point number one, identifying your next and your new. Right off the bat, maybe for some of you, you're already reevaluating what you're going into the new year with. I want you to sit with this. What is something that I really do want to do that's going to push me? That is something I haven't done before. Um, what is that thing? Okay, that, that's literally our first point is just identifying it. I remember um, if I ever had a quantum leap in my business, if I ever had one, it was 2014. It was a new year, but it was July 1st, new seminar year. I woke up with that new year energy of just like, Jamie, we got to get a grip. We got to earn a pink Cadillac. Mind you, my unit was not doing Cadillac numbers. I did not have a Cadillac unit. N nothing of the sorts. Okay. But I really, really, really committed. That was my next. I got really clear. Like, Jimmy, you got to like get for real about this pink Cadillac. Get for real about it. And um, what I had to do to go from a unit that wasn't even close to the unit that did it, well, that in between, that's where I grew. And during that season, I really did experience a quantum leap. Um, we went from having regular, you know, five or $6,000 wholesale months with my unit the months before to that seminar year, our wholesale average per month came out to be $27,500 per month for the year. That was the average. We went from um, not being in a Cadillac to about 100 days later, wrapping up that Cadillac. We went from, I had no first line offspring sales directors, zero, zip, zilch, never done it, to had seven by the end of that seminar year. And that year, much to my surprise, we didn't just earn a Cadillac, we earned the top sales director trip. I was 23 years old at the time. What a fun season, man. It was so fun. It started the genesis of that was really identifying, Jamie, this is where we are, but where are we going right now? And then the other steps that I'm about to give you, that's actually how we broke it down. We made it happen. And the growth that came from that was insane. I want that for all of you. And I've had many moments like that in my business. All right. Number two, audit your excuses. It's time to own up this right after I, you know, was like 2014 version of me. It was like, we're going to earn this Cadillac right after that was OK. But like what's holding me back? That, that that was the and that's very natural. Maybe for you, you've been listening to me for the last few minutes and you're like, it's time. I'm ready to become a sales director. I'm ready. I, I, this is something I really want to do. Like, I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired about it. But this is the thing. This is my next. This is my new. I'm going there. I have to do it. It's the new year. Let's go. What comes literally right after that? Usually for most of us, it's, but, but the reason it hasn't happened yet is X, Y, Z. It is time to completely do a full audit on all the things that you really believe are holding you back. And you might have to. Pause, like literally pause today, create some time in your day to write these things down. I'm going to give you some examples. 
when I was earning my pink Cadillac, I had a few that came to mind. It, it doesn't take long for these things to pop up. Like, but why haven't we done it yet? What, what's holding me back from having these kinds of numbers? First, I had a team full of college students and I just believed. I was just like, yeah, my unit just, it's summer. They all went home for the summer. I'm in a college town. Nobody's here. They're all really young. We don't do numbers like that. You know, like college kids are kind of flaky. You know, it's hard to sell. Nobody has any money. These are all the things that I believed or that popped up, I should say. And I just, I had to be like, yeah, but Jamie, like, do you want the Cadillac or not? Because if we're going to stay here and if this is going to be the hill that we die on, I'm like, yeah, well, my team's young and in college and that's just the way it is. Then we're not going to earn the Cadillac. How bad do you want it? And my answer to myself was, I want it. I want that Cadillac. So I had to flip that on its head and be like, okay, up to this point, that's how I felt about my very young unit. But in this moment, I'm going to own that as it's just a really fancy, really fancy excuse. And um, Jamie, you live in a town full of people with all kinds of demographics and backgrounds. It's not a town of all college students. You're using recruiting college students as a crutch. That's your comfort zone. They're you're comfortable with them. They're all a little bit younger than you. That's what you know. Women who are 10 or 20 years your senior, they intimidate you. That's gonna hold you back from a Cadillac. Is that a good enough reason? And I had to just own. I don't have to wait for the kids to come back to campus in August or September. I live in a populated town right now. I could be warm chatting locals now. I could be getting outside of that demographic of college girls only now. It's a choice. It makes me a little uncomfy, but also not being in a pink Cadillac makes me uncomfy. So these are things I had to do. Another example at the time was like, I'm just bad. I just, I don't, I'm bad at booking. Like, I don't know where people go and get all of these faces booked. How do you guys do that? Um, I just really believed it was a skill set that I just didn't have. And so at the time that came up and it was like, okay, I'm going to get out in the community. I'm going to meet other people that aren't college girls. And then instantly it was like, Ugh, you got a book. Ugh. It's not like, you're not great at that, Jamie. And again, it had to be like, okay, well, let's pause. What does that mean? What does it mean to be bad at booking? Well, in Mary Kay, if you know anybody that's good at booking, if you ask them, like, hey, hey, what script do you use? What's your favorite way to lead generate? They will tell you. They'll give you your, their script. They will answer it for you. They'll tell you anything that you want to know. So that begs the question, if the best bookers I know will tell me all their information, then is it that I'm bad at booking or is it that I just don't book? Is it just that there's only a few things that I'm willing to try and everything else makes me too uncomfortable, like asking for referrals at the party? I just kind of like to skip over it because it just makes me feel awkward. Or booking a party from your party, um, booking a second appointment, um, warm chatting, um, all kinds of different lead generating events, things like that. I just avoided all of it. And so it really came down to the only people I was willing to book were people that I really, really new and hadn't facialed before. I mean, the, the list was really short. And so I had to own, Jimmy, you're not a bad booker. You're unwilling to talk to new people. <laughs> you're, but if you want this Cadillac, if you are willing to warm chat, if you are willing to start getting referrals from your appointments, if you're willing to become a better coach for your appointments and get them to bring people, if you're willing to network more and put yourself out there more, and so then it, it, it came down to, well, Jamie, are you willing to do that? And for me, for the Cadillac, the answer was, yeah, I am. I'm willing. I'm willing to change my mind about this, about myself. I'm willing to try new things and to own up to the fact that I'm not bad at it. I'm My comfort zone is just very small. So maybe this is something that you can do too. Like I said, it won't take long for you to find out what are my excuses? Maybe some other ones for you. Um, maybe there, Maybe some of your excuses aren't so like, self-conscious like mine was for bookings or the unit that I led, maybe it can feel for you instantly. When am I going to have time for that? <laughs> oh, when am I going to have time with all these kids and this job that I have? And, you know, whatever your excuse is, when it pops up, I want to challenge you to find the solution. For me, a lot of my solutions were, Jamie, if you're willing to get a little bit more uncomfortable, this problem would go away. That was my answer. Maybe for you, yours isn't so much of a comfort zone thing. Maybe it's a time management thing. But if yours is like, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I have the time to pull this off, but I really do want it. I promise you, this is figure outable. I promise you. But you're getting uncomfortable might look a little bit different in that it might look like 
sacrificing things like TV time for a season, or it might look like waking up a little bit earlier to make sure that the kids' lunches are packed and that the house is, you know, has everything that needs to get going and you're ready for work so that you can do other things during the day. You know, it might take looking at it, looking at your things and just being like this thing that I have on my schedule, I honestly don't need to do it. I just have been doing it for years. So like, I don't need to lead the Sunday school class in this season. That's okay. Um, I could just maybe not volunteer to be the room mom this year. Um, there are things that you have to do there are things you're going to need to learn how to delegate, especially those of you with families. And then there's just straight up things you got to drop, sister friend. And it has to be one of those things that might be uncomfortable for you to delegate and to drop some things where you're like, oh, don't like don't mess up my system that I have. But again, you have to ask the question, is this something that you really want? Do you want to move forward? Do you want to be a director? Why? Do you want to be a pink Cadillac director or a top director or a national sales director? What are the instant reasons that you feel like are holding you back? And then challenging yourself a little bit there and being like, I mean, you could wake up earlier. You could, you could do that. You know, you could get an assistant and you're like, no, I'm a control freak. But it's like, okay, well then. You can be a control freak in your Chevy Malibu, or you can learn to delegate and rock it in a pink Cadillac. The choice is truly yours. But the first step after identifying what it is that you actually do want to go do, you're going to have to be really real about what are the things that I have been unwilling to do. And am I willing to adjust, change, move some things around, try something new, have a new thought about something. If you are unwilling to make any kind of changes, I don't know that the rest of this training is going to help you that much, to be honest, because growing things change. Growing things change. I love houseplants. I have them all over the place. It's like my new thing. And they look really different from the time I first get one to six months or a year down the road. They take on a different form. They grow and therefore they look different. They change. Look at your children constantly growing. Look at a picture of your child from a year ago. They changed because they grew. Okay. And this is uncomfortable, but I, I just want to, as like your Mary Kay fairy godmother right now, I want to encourage you. Maybe some of the changes you have to make are strictly internal. You might have to make some external changes, but are you willing? Are you willing? Okay. Number three, envision who you want to be. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? I know you're on this call right now listening to the youngest national sales director and you really want me to tell you what to do. Jamie, tell me about the time that you earned a Cadillac in 100 days and tell me exactly what you did. That's what everybody wants to know. And if I could tell you, I would. I really would. It, I, I'm going to tell you what I did and you might actually not love the answer because it's not maybe what you're looking for, but it is the answer nonetheless. I will use my Cadillac as an example. I was a rookie. I was a 22-year-old girl leading a college student team, and um, I wanted to be in a pink Cadillac real bad. And of course, naturally, the first thought after I was like, I want the Cadillac. These are my excuses. These are the things I haven't been willing to do, but I will budge on those. I'm going to work with this because I want this Cadillac. Now, <laughs> what is getting down and dirty and getting my hands dirty and getting to work really look like? I did not have a formula, you guys. And, but what worked for me in that season, I was not able to articulate it at the time. And I remember, I mean, my numbers shot up immediately. We went from having a $5,000 June to a $17,000 July to a $25,000 August to a $35,000 September. And of course, everyone adjacent to me was like, what are you doing though? And I was like, I don't know. And they're like, no, but like, what, like, what have you been doing? And I couldn't answer them. But now looking back, I can. I thought about the pink Cadillac directors that I actually knew, and even the ones that I didn't know, <laughs> I thought about them. And I used my best judgment every day. I didn't really know this is what I was doing at the time, but this is exactly what I did. And I just thought to myself, 
you know, here's this pink Cadillac director in our area. It was a Tuesday at like 10 a.m. and I was at TJ Maxx. There's nothing wrong with that. We have freedom and flexibility. I can totally be at TJ Maxx on a Tuesday. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I was within my rights to be there, right? But I thought about the pink Cadillac director that came to mind that was in our national area. And I just thought, what do I think that she would be doing right now? And I imagined her probably at her desk making calls, inviting her consultants to her weekly meeting, maybe holding a facial, maybe out doing a coffee date, talking to somebody, going over their next steps, um, bringing in a new team member. And I just thought, I mean, I am allowed to be here, but like, I don't see any pink Cadillac directors in this TJ Maxx right now, <laughs> you know? And I just, I, I didn't have to vox her. I didn't have to call her. I didn't have to text her and ask her what she was doing. Something in my intuition just kind of knew. And when I had, you know, things pop up that were uncomfortable or uncomfortable conversations with team members that I led who, and when I say uncomfortable, I mean, maybe they were discouraged. Their party really sucked. They're just bummed out about their Mary Kay business right now. I didn't know what to say. I didn't necessarily have to call up like a Pam Shaw who I did not know at the time. I just kind of imagined Pam from the, the um, trainings that I've heard from her. And I just thought if I, if I thought I knew what Pam Shaw would say to a consultant right now, what would it be? And I just did my best. I just did my best to show up the way I thought women that I admired would handle situations, what they would do with their spare time, um, how they would handle, you know, answering an uncomfy question or um, encouraging somebody who was discouraged or meeting somebody really sharp out and about, like, would they chicken out or would they warm chatter? The sharpest women that I knew that all happened to have pink Cadillacs, every one of them was easy. I, I was like, she'd warm chatter she would do it. And it gave me this courage and it gave me this true north, this compass to follow um, where I was able to come up with my own schedule and all that stuff. And, but, but when I imagined who I wanted to be, the kind of woman I wanted to be, like, what did a pink Cadillac director, how did she walk and talk and dress and carry herself and, and what are the beliefs that she held and what did her day look like? When I had an image in my head of what that looks like, me, my absolute best, the the part of what to, to do became very natural. It really did. And it was so shocking to me how much of the answers were really inside of me. So I know you probably don't like that, but truly I want to encourage you. Who do you want to be? It's be, do, have. You can be the person. And when you be the person, you will do the things and you will have the success. But we can become so obsessed with tell me what to do so I can have the success. Tell me what to do. I'll do it because I want to have the success. And I get it. Whenever I feel myself really want to know what somebody's doing or really be impressed with some success that somebody has, now it's a trigger for me to remember, Jamie, you're focusing a little too hardcore right now on the do. Let's back it up. What does the B look like? That's exactly how I became a national sales director um, after years of just trying to navigate and figure out the perfect strategy. I paused and I thought, Jamie, it's time for you to embrace becoming the kind of leader that could lead that many women, no matter how long it takes. So I told myself, whatever, if becoming a national takes 10 more years, it'll be because I genuinely need to grow that much because it's a big role. And it's so funny when I focus in on how can I grow as a leader right now? What what kind of behaviors do I need to outgrow? What kind of mindsets do I need to outgrow? What kind of healthier habits do I need to adopt so that I could be the kind of leader that could handle this platform? The do part got figured out so quickly and the have part came right behind it. All right, we got to keep moving. I got like seven more points. Okay. Um, be accountable to a trusted mentor. That's number four. Be accountable to a trusted mentor and to take it one step further, keep your circle small. Um, when I was younger in my business, I loved talking about my business with everybody, <laughs> my peers, my friends, my Mary Kay friends, you know, whoever would have a conversation with me about my business, where we're going. I just loved to talk about it. I love to talk. I will have no problem talking for an hour today. I love to talk. Um, it was something that became such a distraction. It slowed me down. And when I look back in seasons, when we were winning the most, having the most fun, just moving the needle on the dream the most, I was so, I just, it, 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 I got so one track minded. And of course I had friends. Of course I had lots of people that I looked up to in the Mary Kay world and all that stuff. But when it came to strategies, 
things I was encountering in my business, the good days, the bad days, I really only took that to like a mentor or two. And it didn't go out to all my friends and I wasn't talking about every feeling and every scenario and every party and every potential recruit and every customer. You know, it just became me, my intuition, God, and like my national trusted mentor. Somebody with my best interest in mind, um, and that has the capacity to lead me to my next point. So if if you are a consultant, that person, I'm going to tell you right now, is actually not your bestie. God bless her. It is your director. It is. It's your director. It's your director. Your national sales director. For directors, you know, maybe you don't have a national sales director, but who is um, just a director that you look up to or a national that you, they just... They challenge you to be your best. There's something in them that when you get in their space, you're just like, oh, she just makes me want to be better. She just wants me. She makes me want to be a better version of myself. Just hit your little wagon onto that star. And um, that's the other thing too, a little sidebar. That's why I, I want to encourage you guys to keep accomplishing and move up the career path because as you do, um, you just get the opportunity to be around more women like that. And I want that for you. Okay. So keep moving, keep moving on that and keep it small, keep it small. You can have lots of friends, but when it comes to like who you trust with your dreams and your goals and your hard days, you only need like one or two people. Okay. Um, number five, go track your most immediate win. Yes. All right. It's a new year. What's done is done. The last six months is done. Wherever you got, however you got to this point on this day in your business, it's all behind you. Whatever. It is what it is. You can't rest on your laurels of the things that you've done really well. And you can't wallow in the things that you didn't do well. We got to move forward. And I want to encourage you to track the next, next, there's that word again, next, the next win. And you got to be like ruthless about it. I'm going to give you another story. So right in the middle of my journey to national, I had a newborn baby in a new city and state where I knew you, where I knew nobody. Okay. So, um, fun times. Okay. New mom, lots of life change, literally moved to another state, another time zone. So my team, my customers, all that, it was just my life. All of a sudden it was just all very new. And Cadillac requalification is coming up. And, you know, I knew, like, Jamie, sister, you're going to have to get a grip, okay? You're going to have to get, I, I, I know you're feeling a little overwhelmed because you don't know anybody. And you're navigating a lot of life change. It wasn't really the baby. It wasn't really that so much. What was really tripping me up was, I don't know anybody here. And I just... This is so uncomfy for me to put myself out there. It would be easier for me to just like stay home and just like really get lost in this new season of life. But I knew, Jamie, if you don't take your head out of the sand, you're going to be ordering yourself a gray car. And I knew, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I knew, gosh, a free or paid for, you know, career car, the use of a free car, I should say. Such a blessing. Any color. Oh my gosh, the way it blesses my family. Such a stinking blessing. Absolutely. But still, it was it was just the facts. If you want to order another pink car, you can't, you, it's time. It's time to go figure out your next win and you're going to have to learn how to meet new people in this town. And maybe you haven't had to do that in a while, okay? Because I was a pink Cadillac top trip director, but it was time. It was time where I really needed to go and, and rebuild a new team. And so the only thing I could think to do, I was on the phone with my national in tears because I was just overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Everything just feels so far away. And she was just like, Jamie, what, what am I holding you accountable to, sister? And I said, I'm going to give you a power start. I'm going to give you a power start. And what that looked like was 30 tracked faces in 30 days. Um, I did not know who those 30 people would be. <laughs> Hadn't met a lot of people yet. And I, I was committed. And so I just, I envisioned, back to envisioning, I envisioned myself handing her a month later a sheet of notebook paper, one through 30, with 30 
fresh faces that I went out and met and that I networked with and that I facialed and, you know, met them at a party, all that stuff. And that really drove me. And you guys, I've set the goal to do a power start many times in my business, but didn't always track it. So I did the month, started off kind of hot, like, woohoo. And by the end of the month, didn't even really remember that was my goal. Have you ever been there? I don't want that for you. I don't want you to spend today at this amazing online event with all these dreams and goals and plans in a month from now, you don't really even remember what it was that you were committing to. You have to track it. You've got to face the data. And that tracking sheet, it held me to this place that I, I could have never gone out and accomplished the things that I had if it was not for tracking this win. It wasn't just picking a win. It's easy. It's easy to be like, you know what? I think I'll do a power star. I think that'd be very healthy for me. That's one thing. It's another thing to get out the sheet of paper and to look at it every day and to look at that number and to be like, girlfriend, you got some work to do. You got some work to do if you're going to hand this sheet of paper filled out to your national. And so what was so good about it for me and tracking it was I saw that number. And if a face canceled on me or fell off, it was like, oh, I feel that. I need to get creative. I need to figure out how I can rebook this or book somebody else. Or, you know, when I did get somebody who said yes, this this energy in me bubbled up to really coach her. Can you bring some more people with you? I'm new to the area. I'm still meeting people. What can I do to incentivize this woman to go from having a facial with me to a full-blown party? What can I do? It invigorated me to get brave, to warm chat the barista, to ask that lady if she could actually host a full-blown party for me, to lean in, to coach those appointments well, and, and to do everything that I could to make up for the cancellations and the no-shows and things like that. It was so good for me, but I would not have found that deeper level of commitment if it wasn't for the tracking sheet. The tracking sheet held me to it. And I remember that last week, it was like, Jamie, <laughs> you, got, you got to make up for it. Where are you going to find 10 faces this week? It has to be 10 and it has to be this week. It has to be. Because I was so committed to handing my national sheet with 30 names on it in 30 days. And so again, when I got to that place where it was, it has to be 10 faces and it has to be this week, what happened? A bolder, braver version of myself appeared. And the women maybe in my neighborhood that I'd been avoiding asking because I didn't want to, you know, be the Mary Kay lady in the neighborhood. No, that went out the window. And it was like, hey, Amber, hi, I'm working on this challenge and I could really use your help for X, Y, Z. Could I have you over to the house this week for I'm asking night? Yes. Okay. But like, can you bring, who else can we invite from the neighborhood? Right. It is something that I would not have been willing to do if I was not tracking the win. If I was not tracking the win and the goal was just to do better at seeing faces and meeting people in my area, then the buck would stop the second it gets uncomfortable. But because I was tracking the win, comfort goes out the window. We get into figure it out mode. And gosh, the uncomfortableness, it only lasts for like a second, you know, reaching out to these people. Once you get into it, that's where all the good stuff happens. Um, I remember facialing a lady in my neighborhood. She spent over $400 with me. It's like the uncomfortableness of reaching out to this kind of new contact. That was very short in comparison to the amazing time that we had at my kitchen table and the $400 sale and to this day, one of my best customers, right? There's so much that can come from it. What is yours? Mine happened to be a power start. Is it Red Jacket? Is it DIQ? Is it, you know, for directors, you're tracking your next level car. What, what are the numbers? Just straight up, what are the numbers that have to happen in January? Is it a gold medal? What is it? I want you to pick that next win. You have somebody to be accountable to now track it. Let's use a gold medal as an example. You are like, oh, January gold medal. That would be so good for me. You cannot stop there. You got to be accountable. Can you literally write it on expo marker on your bathroom mirror one through five? These are the team members I'm getting, putting it on your refrigerator and saying to your husband, this has to happen this month. See this one through five, I have to get five team members. And when I get five team members, we're going to celebrate doing X, Y, Z or vice versa. If I don't do this, don't let me go do X, Y, Z because I'm, this has to happen. I have to get these five team members. Do you understand, babe? It's right here on the fridge. You've got to learn how to be accountable. You've got to track it so that when you walk past it and you're like, I have not gotten a team member in two weeks. 
I have not gotten a team member in two weeks. How do I expect to get this gold medal done? I've got some work to do. I got to figure this out. It's actually such a gift to you because if you didn't have a tract and you didn't have a team member in two weeks, you wouldn't feel it at all. You'd still be feeling really good about that one team member you got two weeks ago. Yay me. But when you're tracking it and it has a deadline, you're going to look at it and you're going to be like, I've made progress, but there's more work to do. And that's really where winning happens. So go track your most immediate win. I, um, I've heard Gloria say, you've got to master your next six months. We can get so focused on what's out there and what's coming and what the dream is, the big dream. What are you, like, you've got to master January. You've got to master January through June. you got to lean in. Don't worry about next seminar year. Don't worry about next quarter, like right now. How can you master January and figure it out? Fa failing, letting yourself down on the promise and the commitment that you make for the activity you want to do right now. You cannot back down on that. You cannot. And happy ending to the Power Start story. My Power Start was honestly like it was okay. Uh, like it, it was not like groundbreaking. I wish I could tell you that I signed 45 team members, but I did. It wasn't that phenomenal, the results. But it changed me, you guys. When I did that. 30th face and I handed it to my national. Jamie was different than on face one. I was different. I kept a commitment to myself. I kept a promise to myself. My confidence level was right back up there. And I looked at the numbers. All right, what do we need for this pink Cadillac? We got it. We got it. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go do it. I got back into my being zone of being my best, but I had to hijack it because I wasn't feeling that way. I wasn't a funk. So I had to hijack getting to my best. I always like touch my heart because it's just something that you feel in your body. Do you, can you think back to a time when you were in a winning season and you were really winning? Like, I, just go back. Maybe it was a time you submitted DIQ when you crushed star consultant for the first time ever. You were on fire. Like, I want you to think back to a goal that you set it and you crushed it. Everybody has one. I like to call them a memory win. When I go back to any memory win I've ever had, it feels different in your body. Like it, like you feel it in your chest. Like I'm unstoppable. I'm fearless. I'm unapologetic. We are going to do it. We're going to figure it out. I don't care what the number on the screen says. We're going to do it. Every time I go back to a, a season like that, I just feel it right here. And when you don't feel it, you think you got to hijack it. How do you hijack it? Go get a stick and win and track it and make sure that it happens. It's a gift to yourself. And in the process, you can also have $400 facials and sign incredible team members. And um, you're going to, you're going to have your circumstances around your business will change, but also like what happens on the inside changes too. So, all right, we're going to keep moving. Number six, make a plan for career conference. So we've been talking about mastering this season. I want you to imagine career conference coming up, finally going to be back in person. What, who, who's that girl? Who's that girl? What outfit are you wearing? First of all, is the outfit a red jacket? Is it a sales director suit? Is it maybe no career apparel? Probably, that's probably not what you envision. What do you envision? What is the stage call that you have to have? What, what is the recognition that you have to have? Is there a certain, are there team members that you imagine having with you? Do you imagine pulling up with a car full of new team members? What do you imagine your bling badge to say? I want you to recommit. Recommit. What's it going to be like at career conference? Less than 90 days from now. It's so much time. It's so much time. You have to recommit in between now and your career conference. You cannot back down. Maybe it's something like the power start story. Maybe it's, um, I cannot, I can, I, I've got to stop messing around. I've got to figure out red jacket. I have to do it. You cannot back down. And this goes right along with tracking your most immediate win. But what is it going to be by career conference? Where do you see yourself? Because the, the beautiful thing about career conference is it's it's close, but it's just far enough away to where you have time, your business could look completely different, but you have to recommit. You've got to show up in January and February and you cannot back down. But if you're willing to do that for these next, like just this little season, just this little chunk of time to get just in that place where you're like, I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. Career conference is going to be an incredible experience for you. And let's just be honest, what's the flip side? Because there's always an alternative. The alternative is that you don't. The alternative is that you back down when it gets a little uncomfy 
here a little hard and you'll be there in career conference, but maybe not with that gut feeling of just like, I'm so proud. I did that. You might be, you might find yourself in the exact same spot at career conference. If something doesn't change and it's not the end of the world, no, it's not. You can recommit then and figure it out by seminar. But what if, what if you just recommitted now? What if you committed now? What if you decided now career conference is going to be an incredible experience for me? You have time for that to be the reality. Okay. So the choice is yours, my friend. All right. Number seven, attract. This is something that you can do to grow right now, but it's going to take a lot of the legwork that we've been talking about. But when you get there, you're going to start attracting. Here's the thing. I've also heard Glory say this. Winners come out of a winning environment. Winners come out of a winning environment. So for directors, if you're like, oh, I just really want offspring. I just really want you red jackets. I want a big team with me at career conference. Okay. I have learned over and over and over and over and over and over again in my business that so many times I had winners and they were lying dormant in my unit and they didn't start springing up until some people in my unit started winning. And sometimes the only option was for this girl to win, like going to get the power start, getting the gold medal, you know, all that stuff. It wins beget more wins. Power up achievers beget more power up achievers. Stars beget more stars. Reds beget more reds. DIQs beget more DIQs. My national area finished with 13 pink Cadillacs. Uh, pink Cadillacs beget more pink Cadillacs. And it's so funny, you guys, because when I was a consultant, a pink Cadillac was the wildest dream. I remember seeing a Cadillac on the road of any color. <laughs> it could be a black Cadillac, a white Cadillac. I would get literally butterflies, knots in my stomach because I wanted one so bad. But once I figured out how to get the Cadillac, and I could empower others. It gave other winners a place to win. And I attracted winners to myself. We finished our national area with 13 pink Cadillacs, okay? So winning begets more winners. So even for consultants on here, um, and you're like, oh, I don't really have much of a team yet still. Go be a winner. You will attract winning team members. That's how you're going to build this strong DIQ team, okay? It's important. So win yourself. Start showing up fearlessly, unapologetically. Like I said, if you're struggling to feel those things, then you have to go win first. You have to go win first. So you can go circle back to point number five, okay? Um, and I've always said this, and it might not be scientific, and there might not be any studies done from it, but in my decade of experience, I have found, this is what I know. When you're new or when you're young in the business, you think people want to join the most successful woman in the business's team. You know, of course they want to join her team because she's in a pink Cadillac. Of course they want to join her team because she's a top director. But I found that that's not true. It can't be true because every pink Cadillac that ever existed at one point drove something other than a pink car and people joined their team. And when I started Mary Kay, I had a banged up keyed. It literally, we bought it with key marks down both ends of it. A 2001 Dodge Durango. It was a bit of a clunker, um, but it worked. Um, people joined my team with the keyed up Dodge Durango. So what's to that? I've discovered, I've watched it over and over again. People join the team of the girl who they think is going places. It's not so much about where you are right now as it is, are you going somewhere? Do you have somewhere to be? Do you have a goal? Do you, do you have something that is on your heart? It's something that people can feel. The people who follow you, the people that used to work at your old job or went to your old school who you're still Facebook friends with, they're watching. And there's a certain energy around a girl who just believes she's going somewhere, even if that girl is a new consultant, okay? People will join that girl's team. So are you going somewhere? Because if you are, no matter what your car looks like, no matter what your suit looks like, people will join your team if they believe that the you're headed somewhere on a mission they want to be they want to be on the moving train and so um i've experienced this not only as a consultant but like i said during that season when i was re-qualifying for a cadillac after having a baby it was i wasn't doing a lot i, I wasn't doing a lot of activity i was really hiding behind um just i'm a new here and i'm a new mom and i was you know and that's all valid but still i hid behind it a little long and when i pulled myself out of it is when i started attracting women in the area who I had known, you know, for several months upon moving, they joined when they saw me moving, when they saw me going, running towards something. 
the Cadillac, a better me, a better future. That's when they wanted to join the team. So keep that in mind. All right, number eight, you got to raise your standards. What do you expect out of yourself? I'm going to have to wrap it up, but I'll give you an example. For years, my standard for myself was I order 600 wholesale a month because that way I'm always a star. Yay. Right? I get the jewelry and that's that's fabulous. And if that's not your standard for yourself, it's a great place to start. That's a great place to start. January through June, the standard, I will earn my power up every month. That is something that I will do. That is my standard. I will be a star, okay? And I will earn my power up. That is fabulous if that's not your standard yet. That's where you can raise it right now, literally starting right now. All you have to do is to decide it and then you will do it. But then there came a point where it was like, Jamie, you've had the same standard for wholesale monthly production for years, years. And so that's when I was like, Jamie, it's time to raise the bar. 600 a month is great, but you've been doing it for a long time. You can do more. So I raised the standard to national court of sales numbers and national court of sales is what we did. And now I'm a national. I don't have to track that. I won't get recognized if I do the court of sales, right? As a national, I will do the court of sales this year because it's just become a standard. It's so funny. It's so funny. So raise your standard in as many areas as you can. Maybe it's personal selling. That was just an example. Um, but you can apply this to how you lead your unit, your personal recruiting, your team size, your unit size, your star level. Maybe you're always a star, but you're a sapphire star all the time. This is the quarter to go out and be an emerald or a pearl, okay? Raise it. Raise the standard. Not just setting a goal, but raise your minimum. Make your ceiling your floor. And you're going to hit it pretty easily without that much discipline because it becomes a standard. It becomes automatic. And oh, my gosh. I'm, like, out of time. Number nine, go the distance. If you keep quitting every time it gets uncomfy or a little bit hard, you are not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Whatever it is, you are not going to make it red. You're not going to make it to directorship or pink Cadillac or national sales director. If you quit every time it gets uncomfy. Okay, so you're, this, is, this is advice for all of us. Stop stopping. You have to stop that. You have to go the distance. If it's the power start, you're going to 30. We're not stopping at 25. Okay, we're not stopping at 15. We're not stopping at 10. And again, that's just an example. You can apply that to so many different areas. I have a really great story. I am out of time. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I'm literally out of time, but I have to say this. Should have gotten this out. I'm sitting at my desk. You guys see this? I was a new consultant and my director said, if anybody in here will do a power start, 30 phases in 30 days, I'll give you a power start pin. And I was like, I want that. <laughs> I'm an eye personality. And um, I had to fight for it. I had to fight for it. And I got to 28 faces by the end of the month. And I felt good. Your girl had like a silver medal. I was a star. I was a new red jacket. I mean, I was like, this went well. And I was happy with 28 faces. But I knew Jamie does not get a power start pin for 28 faces. I only get it for 30. So what did I do? I booked two high school seniors to be faces 29 and 30 because I had to get that pin. I drove 45 minutes to facial the high school seniors. Um, they bought nothing. <laughs> I still shared the opportunity with them because they were like in that like season where they were turning 18 and they didn't join. Um, but it was great. I got my power start, my I got my power start pin that I'm to this day really proud of, and I have it on my desk. And the reason I have it on my desk is six months later, the 30th face. Her name was Megan. Her name is Megan. And Megan reached out to me on Facebook. She said, do you remember me? And I said, do I remember you? I was in DIQ at the time. And she said, I want you to marry Kay. That girl, that Megan, is Megan Wilkes. She joined when she turned 18. She's the shyest person I've ever met. Megan has gone on to earn four top sales director trips. She's currently an executive sales director. Literally would not have finished my national area without her because I committed to finishing a power start when I was a senior consultant. Do you get what I'm saying? Go the distance. Finish it. Same thing when I earned uh, that, that, um, that I requalified for that Cadillac. I gave my national 30 faces and face like 31 or 32 after I had reached the goal, I recruited a rock star that just turned my unit's culture around. She became a red jacket in a week. I had to finish the power start. I had to do what I said I was going to do. Go the distance. Number 10, I'm, I'm out of time. Um, create, go create what you wish existed. You might not 
think about this that much because our Mary Kay culture is amazing. But, um, I, you know, I remember how much I loved getting notes in the mail for my senior, for my national. I was just like, I want to get notes. I love it when they like write me stuff. I love when they recognize me and it dawned on me um, right before I was building Offspring. I was like, if I like getting notes, if I like getting recognized, what, what would it look like if I did that for the people on my team? Like, I know I'm not like a national. I know I don't have Offspring, but I do lead somebody. So what if I started showing up for them in my dream scenario how, of how I would love to be treated. And of course, I, I was it was great. I had a national who was amazing, but I started to get creative. If I could create any kind of environment, if I could create any kind of experience, what would I do? And instead of 